welcome back troglodytes to another episode of the troglies guitar show now this is a rare model for an sg this is known as the gibson sg elite and the elite series was done in the late 80s kind of when jessica witz kind of took over gibson started doing a bunch of different weird wacky things before he started going back to the basics you know bringing the classic out and then eventually opening up the custom shop for historic reissues but this is just from a beautiful time period of gibson the sg elite came in two finishes pearl white that's right this isn't normal white i had a custom in this finish about uh, six months ago there's a little bit of metallic sparkle to this finish so pearl white and metallic sunset, which is kind of a pink, slightly purple. I pretty much compared this guitar to the custom light. They came out pretty much both at the exact same time, and they each had the coil taps on it. So it's two volume and a single tone with a coil tap on this. So this is basically a beautiful blend of a you know a 61 sg standard mixed with a custom so you've got your gibson logo in mother of pearl you've got the crown of a standard but you have the ebony fretboard and block inlays of a custom this guitar originally had a locking nut on it from the factory they're kind of big and goofy looking they didn't come with tremolos or anything like that but they still had the locking nut now that has been removed and a Les Paul custom truss rod cover added. Also, a bone nut was put on this one and a 57 Classics replaced whatever the original pickups were that are in here. I'm actually uh, selling the original pickups separately. So if you're interested in those, they're kind of like a very, very late Tim Shaw era right after They it. still have the same patent number on it and they have the tiny little screws, but they don't have ink stamps. They're kind of interesting because they have that gray long tubing with two wires at the end so they can be coil tapped. So they're very interesting pickups. But this one just has 57 classics from a more modern era and the bridge has also been replaced. But it is an ABR1 style so it's kind of a prehistoric in that sense that it has an ABR1 because not all guitars have that in this time. What I suggest getting one of these SG Elite series. If you can find one that's less expensive than a custom, but not too much more than a regular SG standard, I would suggest trying one of these because the only thing that's not custom about it is the headstock. You don't have the binding around it and the custom emblem. Everything else is you know pretty well spot on you got your abr1 bridge so it kind of has that historical accuracy so the coil tap which can be a nice little feature depending on what you're playing but i think these sg elites are cool ebony fretboards on a standard body with a standard headstock the cleans will be running through a gibson super gold tone ga30 rv <laughs> Dirty tones come from a Marshall JMP 1C. <laughs> really 
heavy to me compared to some other SGs I've had. And it's just a hair under 8 pounds, 7 pounds, 15.3 ounces. This SG has already been spoken for, but if you're interested in finding a similar guitar, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash troglis, T-R-O-G-O-I-S. All right, the face of the headstock, it's kind of aged just that beautiful light gold tint. Nothing too incredibly bad on the finish. You just got some light string change scratches and whatnot. Once again, you have your crown logo. I like to call it a frog because it looks like a frog. Here you can see where the original locking nut was installed. They didn't fill those holes in or anything. Again, you have a bone nut, ebony fretboard with the block inlays. Now the frets are in good shape, but they do show some very minor wear. And uh, the neck is definitely a slim 60s profile. Now, I want to make a comment about this guitar. And that comment is this has to be the most acoustically resonant SG I've ever played. Something about it, it just it projects really well acoustically. It just has a huge sound. I haven't actually plugged this one in yet, so I'm very interested to see what it sounds like plugged in. But it just sounds massive. Now this guitar is in pretty good shape. You can see you got a little bit of a ding right there. But... Overall, it's in clean shape. Again, you have two volumes and a single tone with a factory coil tap here. It's pretty common to find people that take this out and drill it for a second tone. It's also something that happens quite often. Take a look at the sides here. You can see you got a little bit of wear and some light nicks and dings. You also have uh, Dunlop strap buttons. And it looks like a little bit of stand rash. Back of the headstock, serial number 8074-8515. So it's a Nashville made in USA. Gold Grover tuners. Now this is kind of the shame for this one. It hasn't had a headstock repair, but dang, it just had to get finish checking in a very bad location. You've got a few that just stem across there. What that means is this guitar probably had a little bit of trauma, but not enough to break it. So it got a couple finish check lines. That's what kind of keeps this example affordable. It is there and I want you to know about it. You also have your typical finish line cracking where the binding actually ends and the neck begins. You kind of got that on the sides here. Then it's also present on the other side. But that's just very common on all white guitars. I know black guitars do it. Pretty much any finish, if you're looking at it long enough, will have those lines there. Luckily, the heel joint on these is good. Sometimes you'll get little cracks on these SGs because the heels are weak. They'll like split down here. Or, as I was saying, sometimes the finish just cracks. Doesn't necessarily mean it's been broken, but it sure does kill resale value and make it impossible to sell. But you're good on that one. Again, Dunlop strap buttons, but not too much wear on this one. It's a fairly clean shape. Looks like you got a little bit of buckle wear here, but nothing that really deteriorates the whole look of this guitar. We'll take a look under black light here. Everything's looking good on the front of the headstock. Once again, those holes there are from the original locking nut installed from the factory. You can see there's actually four of them. Body of the guitar is glowing the way it should. I don't really see anything to really make mention of. Back of the headstock, everything's good. And we'll take a good long look here at the uh, headstock area because there is that finish checking. There you can kind of see it. It's just finish checking. It's not in the wood, but I do want you to be aware that it is there. And we'll look at the sides of the neck to show that there's been no repairs. It's just the typical finish line running up and down the neck. It kind of sucks that it happens, but it's just commonplace, I have found, unfortunately. But it lets you know it's a real Gibson. <laughs> Sadly, you have to identify it by its flaws, not by its prestige. So everything's good on the body. Take a look at the heel joint, everything looks good there. And everything.
everything looks good on this side as well. This guitar has what I would consider a kind of era correct case. I always just thought the Gibson USA case line came out in like very late 89 and early 1990. This is like one of the first edition series of it because it the, has the giant pink blanket in it. So I'm guessing this guitar maybe sat around at the store for a while or I'm wrong at when these came out. But I would definitely consider this a very close to original case if it's not the original case. It's got quite a bit of wear and tear to it as you can see here. It has a really nice feel to it. Like there's no texture to it. It just feels flat. Whereas, you know, more of the later Gibson USA ones, they have a little bit of a texture to it. This one kind of reminds me of like the older Liftons, like the uh, Heritage 80 Lifton reissue case. So you got two, three, which is the locking latch, and a fourth latch there. The lock latch is broken. What actually happened is the guy forgot what the combination was. So he just unbolted that part from it. So it does work if you know how to unlock it. And this kind of has a leather-like handle to it. You can see it's kind of yellowed with age. But here's the famous pink blanket case. It's the first iteration of the case shroud. This eventually switched to a thin satin sheet, but this is what it is for the early years. It's a beautiful pink case. They're kind of going for the Lifton look, but didn't quite get there it's a little too pink but you got nice heel support double neck rest you do have a little pocket here that has a little bit of case candy and you do have the original gibson little pamphlet in here i believe this is the warranty information and it says sg elite pearl white and it has the serial number on it thank you charlie lights for tuning in today don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode take care